All right. Welcome this morning. Um, as you know, we record we record the services, and it's good to see everybody. I'm glad you guys made it out um, this weekend, our thirteenth week. Ooh. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Yes. And God has been faithful, and there's always been somebody here. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing I was a little nervous about when the Lord said to do this. I said, "What if I'm just sitting in there, you know, and just blinking?" So I preached to myself, what do I do? He said, no, someone's going to be there. I have something to say. And uh, he does have something to say. And this is a seed, and I appreciate you all for planting early on like this, because it's going to grow up to be a big, huge, strong oak tree yes. from a little tiny seed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this service. We thank you for those who are here. We thank you for blessing this thing already, for seeing it ahead of time and knowing what it is you wanted to say and answering our questions before we even ask them what a good God you are. And we have, there's nothing we can do to repay you for your goodness but say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Today, I have been listening to Joseph Prince um, talking about manna. I don't know if you ever heard him talk about the manna, but talking about the bread of uh, bread of life. Jesus said he was the bread of life. And the Lord started giving me revelation on how important that is for us to, to know how important the bread is. I know that sounds a little strange right now, but you're going to see what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, so the title of today's message is The Bread of Life. The manna principle. And there was a reason in the Old Testament why the Lord gave the children of Israel manna even farther off, you know, deeper than the surface than what we've seen. You know that there's nothing insignificant in the Old Testament. Everything points to Jesus. And God had a plan even when he gave the children of Israel manna. Um, you all familiar with that? You're familiar with the, the manna? Uh, it's actually... It was called manhu, meaning uh, where is it? People what? thought it says what is it, but it actually really was where is it? <laughs> wow. I found that out and it was really, I was like, wow. So I started looking some more. Um, we always start off with our scripture, they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. And we are designed and set apart to reign in life. The world is ours. Everything in it. Because if it's God's and, he, and we're His, then it's ours. Everything in it. We are to reign over every situation, have everything we need, whenever we want, and do whatever we need to do, when we need to do it, all the time. It's ours. And the Bible says the only two qualifications are to receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And you'll reign. And it's very simple. We made it harder because our nature is to want to do more and to get credit. But the Lord has spelled it out. Receive the abundance of grace and the gift, not the reward, of righteousness. The gift of being made right. We understand that, but we keep, we're going to keep hitting it every week until we get it down inside of us to where it's the first thing that pop out when someone says hello. <laughs> you just bust right back out and say you know that those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness is going to reign. That's why we're praying. Okay. Exodus 16, 11 through 16. Um, this is the time when the Lord gave the instructions about the manna. And the Lord spake unto Moses, verse 11, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Now, this is one of the times the Lord did not rebuke them. Because there was no rebuke from the Lord before the law was given. So he heard, but he, he recognized that they was complaining. He said, I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay 
round about the host. Verse 14, and when the dew that lay was gone, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there was a small round thing. Say small round thing. Small round thing. There was a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, we say, what is it? It is manna, but it says, they say, what is it? For they wist not what it was. They didn't know what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord has, say, given. Given. Given you to eat. That's important. Every time we see the word given, I'm going to ask you to say given. It's real important that you know that it's given to you. Yeah. I want to make this clear. Whatever the enemy has planned for you, it never catches God by surprise. I don't care what it is. He can sit up and strategize and plan and write out a booklet on how he's going to get you today. It does not catch God by surprise. God is not sitting up wondering how he's going to fix the mess that somehow you didn't got into. I don't care what it is. I don't care who you've interacted with, who you're with, where you went, or anything like that. God is not caught off guard, and he's still your father. So you got to know that. you got to trust that he loves you. And even in the midst of something going on or going wrong or you think that, oh, why is this happening? Your father knows. Just like you wouldn't know uh, if you had your, your child was small and everything. And you told him he couldn't go to the, to the park because maybe he had a little cough. You know what I mean? And you know it could turn into something different. And so he's going, why can't I go with all my friends and everything? And you're saying you can't go. Now you not being mean and everything, but you know what's going on. You know that that little cough could turn into a cold or something like that. And him running around and jumping around, he's not going to be responsible because he doesn't know what to do. So as a father, you make that decision to let him stay home. Mm. And it's the same way with God and us during the day or during the times that we're with people or we're going through things. God lets things, allows things to happen, but he is not going to allow you to be messed up. He's watching. If he knows how to, if you know how to protect your children, he really knows how to protect his. Amen? Yes, amen. So I just want to make that clear. Whatever enemy has planned for you, it never catches God by surprise. God does not want his people independent of him. He wants you to, he doesn't want you trying to handle everything by yourself. He wants you to depend on him as a father, just like a kid would. And if your kid comes in there and tells you, this is what I'm getting ready to do, and he's five or six, I'm getting ready to go out there and get in the car, and I'm going to the store, and I'll be back when I get back. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you feel about your little kid? You, uh, you are not going to be independent of me, and I'm not leaving you alone because you don't know what to do. In, in our life, the God has set up and everything, a lot of times we think we know what to do, mm -hmm. but we don't know what to do. God wants us to know that he is our God and he is a good God and he is a good father and his way is the best way for us like we've been talking about to rest and relax in what he has set aside for us just like you you want your kids you ever, you ever tell your kids you're going to understand until you don't understand later but right now you don't you don't understand same thing now the manna obviously is the word of God. And the reason why it came in a small round substance, the Lord was showing me because basically it's bite size. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get it all at one time. That's the reason why it came in a small round substance. It was little. And the word of God comes to us in small round substances. And we get it and we eat it. And it nourishes us. And everything that you need for the day is wrapped up in the manna. Everything. And it was, the Lord wasn't crazy. He gave them something that they didn't know what it was. But it, all the nourishments and all the vitamin A, B, C, D, and iron and all that type of stuff was wrapped up in this little bitty thing that the, he gave to them every day. Full on everything. All in that one little flaky thing that was on the ground. And now, 
the reason why I say it is uh, he gives it to us in bite size because in um we heard the uh, you heard the, this is Isaiah I didn't write down where it was found but you know you've heard in Isaiah for us the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth he said his word is like rain and snow it just you know what I mean? Because you know that there are billions of gallons of water up in the clouds. Billions. And if the Lord was to release it at one time, we'd be crushed. Mm -hmm. Houses would smash down. You know what I mean? So something happens in the atmosphere when it starts to rain and it breaks up the droplets and everything. Even to where it comes down and one little drop won't even harm a small flower. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's the way the Lord's word is. He sends it out to where it's gentle and it refreshes and, you know, and it nourishes. And it's not too much. But the Lord said, that's how my word will be that goes out of my mouth. You'll get what you need. It'll refresh you. It'll nourish you just like the snow and the rain that comes down like little droplets because you can't handle a whole lot. And the Lord is just feeding us like he's doing right now. That makes sense? Yes. Because he's feeding me. Listen, Jesus said um, unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. Say, giveth. Giveth. For the bread of God, which, he, which, which the bread of God is he, which comes down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Say, giveth. Giveth. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Say give. Give. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now once you see Jesus was pointing out that the example in the Old Testament of the manna that was given daily, that had all the substance and everything they needed into, is actually a picture of Jesus. Because he just said that it's not the same thing that Moses gave you. I'm not that bread, but uh, I give you, the, I'm the true bread from heaven. And so this, this substance of Jesus is way more potent and powerful than that which they had in the Old Testament. But I'm starting to see the reason why the, uh, the, the Lord, while he was, he was trying to show them who he was in the wilderness, the children of Israel, through these small things. Everything pointed to Jesus. I mean, everything. When Moses was up in that mountain for 40 days, sidetrack a little bit. When he was up in that mountain for 40 days, the Lord wasn't just giving him the law that whole time. I'm telling you, he was not. Uh, he was up there showing, because the Lord was giving him all the information about the, 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 the temple and the styles and, the, and how, what this should be made out and everything, because the Lord was showing him pictures of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Moses had that revelation. The Lord showed it to him. And then at the end of the 40 days, the Lord wrote down those Ten Commandments. And this is interesting. Moses came down with those Ten Commandments. And the Bible said he made it to the foot of the mountain. He didn't come into the camp yet. But they, had all, they were already down there breaking the first commandment. They hadn't even heard it yet. And the Lord showed me that the reason why we always thought, like in the movie, the movie uh, Charleston Heston with Moses, that he got mad and threw those things down and broke them. But the Lord showed me that the, Moses was very wise said he broke the Ten Commandments up at the, at the foot of the mountain before he came into the camp because if they, once they became knowledgeable, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. once, uh, once they became aware mm -hmm. of the law, they would be guilty of it. Wow. And as soon wow. as he walked into that camp, everybody would have died. So Moses broke them before he even got to the camp because he knew. And you know, God didn't rebuke him for breaking. He didn't get mad at him. Because everyone would have died. If he's saying, the, I'm the first one, is I'm the Lord your God, and you can't worship no other God before me and everything, and this is the law that they wanted, and he's up at the, at the foot of the mountain looking down into the camp, and they're down there worshiping and jumping around, and you're doing what God knows what. As soon as he came in there and let them know what law is, just like once you know that the speed limit is 65, now all of a sudden you have a knowledge of the tree 
of the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now you know the difference between good and evil. Wow. And so, as soon as they would know the difference between it, and the, look at the Lord's mercy on that. Because they all could have died. And so, the Lord saved them. And then Moses went back up into the mountain the second time. And this time, he didn't stay 40 days. The Lord just rewrote with his finger on the commandments. And he said, but this time, when you go down there, I want you to put it under the mercy seat. And, and when you know that they sprinkle blood on the mercy seat, because God can't see the, our faults through blood. That's just the way he is, through the sacrifice of blood. And his mercy was like, I can't, they're going to die. <laughs> Even though they want this stuff, they're going to die. And God's, God's so wonderful with that, how he put that and you think about the, the woman with the, that was caught in adultery and was thrown before Jesus in the precincts of the temple. Now, just we talked about this before, but just so you know, that area where Jesus was teaching, was th them throwing her down and, you know, after being caught in adultery was very rude while he was teaching. But this area, I want you to know, um, my apologies to um, Mel Gibson and the Passion, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Christ, but this area did not have dirt. It wasn't dirt ground where Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. It was all stone in this area, particular mm -hmm. area. And so when they when they threw her down and said, this woman was caught in adultery. The law says to stone her. What do you say? And Jesus but didn't say anything. And he bent down and he started writing on stone. Probably the dust in the snow. <gasps> And, and, and basically, the, if they were smart, they would have saw that he was like, I'm the one who gave the Ten Commandments. So if you're going to say, do you know what I mean? Wow. So he probably wrote, the Bible doesn't say what he wrote, but he probably wrote on one of the commandments, thou shalt not lie, and okay. looked up. And probably someone who just lied, one of them was like, oh, and, and so he wrote and wrote and wrote, and then he stood up and he said, okay, now he who is without sin, you throw the first stone. And the Bible said that one by one they all left out of the precincts of the temple. And if, you, if you know what the temple looks like, it's like an outer court of the actual temple, but it's still inside. Mm -hmm. And then there's outside. Mm -hmm. And one by one they all left out. And Jesus turned around and looked and told asked. Them. And then the, the Bible says that after, uh, after he did that, he bent down and rolled on the ground again. Second time. But, but listen, the interesting thing is that when, remember, the, the Lord wrote on the, the Ten Commandments a second time. But the second time had mercy in it. The second time, he's like, put it under the mercy seat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so when they all left, he looked around and said, where are those who condemn you? Is there anyone? She said, there's no one, Lord. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now see, if it was possible for her to go and sin no more, if anyone was possible for anyone to go and sin no more, then what would be the purpose of Jesus being there? He didn't say go and commit adultery no more. He said go and sin no more. So basically, after the, based on his teaching, she probably wouldn't have got five or six steps without sin. So it wasn't that he was saying don't commit adultery no more. He, was, he gave her the gift of no condemnation, which empowered her to go and sin no more. And we always say the church has it backwards. They'll say, we won't condemn you if you go and sin no more. But Jesus gave her the gift of no condemnation, so she couldn't go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, she had this power to follow mm -hmm. him. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he wasn't saying, go be good now. Because <laughs> no one could go be good now. Someone would have went and, if they messed up, they could go and be, you know, and sin no more. That wasn't the case. And the Lord was trying to let us know that when he bent down for that second time, it was like him saying again, I'm the same, the same God. Now I'm going to write a second time, and it's going to be mercy. You know what I mean? On the cobblestone, I mean on the, the stone ground. And then later, if you read, a lot of people stop right there, but if you do read, I think it's John 8. If you do read, the Bible says, and then Jesus uh, spoke to them again. So he must have went outside. The very next verse said, he spoke to them again. Same Pharisees and all that. So he must have walked outside with her. And there they all were standing. And he said, the first thing he said was to them, again, he said, I am the light of the world. 
And who, who, those who find me shall find and have the light of life. And I thought that was interesting because a lot of times we think that the light is there to expose our sin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When the light comes on, you see how dirty you are. But actually, Jesus responded saying, I'm the light that shines in it to show you how clean you are. That there's nothing mm -hmm. there. When Jesus, look, look at his response right after That's the good. forgiving of this woman. Wow. And it wasn't just forgiving her for that one time, but he was letting them know. This is the lesson. My light does not expose sin. It exposes how clean you are. That's the reason why she has no more sin. Isn't that good? That's some good wow. stuff. Right there. Wow. I don't even know how I got this. This is a... Uh, oh, what's wrong with that? Can you go back one or two? Okay. Oh. This is a... Uh, Jesus said... I know it's in the book of John. And sometimes when I'm writing real fast... Oh, okay, and we didn't have it. Uh, that's fine. That's um, fine. I forget to put that... Okay, that, that's fine. The scripture just, really. just for the listeners there, and we're trying to, to look for that. Okay, well, if you're looking it up, you look up, because uh, I'm not sure, I believe it's in John. You look up um, the bread from heaven, type in bread from heaven, and you'll, it'll come right there. All right? Now, listen, the Bible says, now faith comes by hearing the word. And we always, you know the scripture, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Did you know that that scripture is really faith comes by hearing the word of Christ? It's Chris, Christo. It's two words, word of God and word of Christ. And we always, even though our Bible says the word of God, it is actually faith comes by hearing the word of Christ because God spoke uh, the Old Testament and everything. You can't get faith by hearing the law. You can't get it. So, but everything Jesus spoke, brings faith now. You see what I mean? When you look it up yourself, if you have any type of dictionary or whatever on your computer or whatever, it says faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. So it means that your source for any type of faith that you need is always wrapped up and found in Christ in the manna. And Jesus just says, I was the manna. I'm the manna. I'm the daily food that you need. And those who find me find the bread of life. That's Hebrews 12. I think it's the first chapter. First verse. Every time you hear the word, it's manna from heaven. Every time. These, what you're getting right now is small, round substances. And it's enough for you. That's why it's important, to, if you can, not putting condemnation on no one, but it's important to when you get up in the morning, put a small, round substance in your mouth. That's excellent. Because it's good to know about your, you get your yeah. feeling for the day. Instead of trying to get in at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Because by then you're all hungry and stuff. <laughs> and now you, you're eating it all because it's just hungry. You can't really taste it. Yeah. And, listen, and the house of Israel, this is verse 31 of the previous verse, Exodus 16. And we're back there again. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Now this is interesting. It was pure white. Coriander seed, if you look it up, it's a seed um, that you found in Israel. And it's bright, pure, white, snow white seed. It was pure white, and the taste of it was like honey. Like it was made from honey. And they're little small things, so you can imagine they gathered up all that they need. Um, and it was all really white. And it was made of honey. Tastes like honey. That's important. Now listen to this. Um, this was the scripture right before that scripture. I threw this in because it was just interesting. The Lord gave me a revelation. Um, of Exodus 16. It's, he said, right before he said that it was, it was made of... Let me read it. Just so we can be safe. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Now the scripture before it, see for that the Lord has given, say given, given, given you the Sabbath. Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. 
Now, what, who else rested on the seventh day? God. God rested on the seventh day. <laughs> because he had gathered up everything that, every, that Adam and Eve needed before he created them. And so when they came, when he created them on the seventh day, I mean, sixth day, I'm sorry, when he created them on the sixth day, he placed them into the seventh day with all the provisions so all they could do was rest. Remember we talked about rest last week? Oh, that's good. All they could do was rest. They didn't even have to gather it. And the Lord is painting a picture here. And we thought it was just, you know, a useless mumbo jumbo in the Bible with all this extra stuff that folks are reading. But everything, <laughs> really, because I used to think that, what is the purpose of all this? I'm just reading about uh, dishes and plates and, <laughs> and the wood. and uh, It just didn't make no sense to me. But as you start understanding grace, It'll all start coming alive to you. You'll start seeing Jesus in everything. So the people rested on the seventh day because there was enough gathered over on the sixth day. This is what the Lord has commanded, that every man gather it of as much as he will need an omer for each person, according to the number of your persons taken, every man for those in his tent, the people did so, and they gathered some more and some less. Now, an omer is like what we would call pounds. We use pounds and ounces or grams and kilograms or whatever. But an omer basically was a day's supply. So each one of them, it said, gather it as much as he will need. Now, some folks probably needed three or four settings at one time. Some people probably ate light. They probably didn't eat that much. Probably, ate, you know, some people only eat one or two meals a day, whatever. But it says, as much as he will need for each person according to the numbers of persons, take it. Every man for those in his tent. And the people did. Some more and some less. And when they measured it with an omer, he who gathered much had nothing over. And he who gathered little had no lack. Each gathered according to his need. Now the revelation is that is that sometimes we think that you, we may not have as much revelation as someone else in stuff. And you know, sometimes we may only get a, a little bit of peace out of something like that. But what the Lord was saying, that the same amount that you got in your little is the same amount of faith, grace, and everything is as, as what Billy Graham got. And it, 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 it will give you the same amount of grace and everything that you need during your day, the same way it will him, no more, no less. You'll have exactly what you need. You're not, he's not fuller than you. He doesn't have more than you. And the Lord is putting it there. So, so if you don't get a, if you don't have big revelations about stuff yet, and you do do get something, you know, out of the message or something like that, rejoice with it. Hang on to it. You may, you're just eating light, but the Lord measures it the same as someone who spent 10 hours in the Word. For you. Isn't that good? Yeah. God was pitch, fixing. So, and another thing, eat fresh. I said, you know, that's the logo for uh, uh, Subway. Yeah. But it's important that we eat fresh. <laughs> All right. And the reason why, because Moses said, let none of it be left until morning. But they didn't listen to Moses. Some of them left it until morning. And they bred worms and became foul and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Now, this thing is a one day thing, it's fresh. Fresh manna that you got to eat every day. Don't be trying to eat off of something that uh, from yesterday or the day before because it just says that it bred worms and it stank. It was no good for you to try to use what God has given you for today, tomorrow. And you know Jesus spoke on that. Doesn't the Bible say, give us this day our daily bread? Mm -hmm. So you cannot be concerned about tomorrow's provision you know, what are you going to eat and what are you going to put on and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. There was enough for today. And some people still got worried and scared that there wasn't going to be no manna out there on the grass in the morning. So they saved it. Trying to hold on. Wow. To, to try to fix it. To, you know what I mean? Try, and remember we said God wants, doesn't want his people independent of him. He wants to be the provider. And the reason why is because when you're provided by him, you're provided well. And it's a witness, like we were talking about earlier. People will see something on you and in you and say, what is this about you? And all you have to do is open your mouth 
You don't have to go knock on no doors. You don't have to pass out <laughs> no flyers. You don't have to, you know, you have to come up with, with routines of how much food you want to buy. So maybe they'll listen and when we come to the door with, we did all that stuff, you know. Yeah. We meant well, but we would meet up at the church. And we know we, and on Saturday morning, folks would give up, get up early and they were sacrificing for Jesus. Oh, okay, how tired you was. And we'd all be there in the morning and we had all this food from the food bank, loaves of bread and cookies and stuff. And we would fan out through the neighborhood. Knock on the door. We want you to know that we love you. Here's some bread and here's some cookies and everything, trying to, you know, and uh, we want to pray for you. Do you know Jesus? And, you know, and we had some success. You know, but there's a better way. There's a glory, more glorious way than us having to put labor into it. God wants to do it through us so it all point to him. Yes. He wants people to come running after you like he did when he ran after Jesus. You know what I mean? They want folks want to go where the food is. They'll go. Those folks follow Jesus for three days. Three, think about think about that. Really, in your mind, even if you have to close your eyes, think about when the disciples turned to Jesus and said, these folks have been following us for three days. Walking. <laughs> They had left the house and everything, and haven't eaten. Wow. And they said, send them home, Jesus, lest they faint in the way. And Jesus said, feed them. You know what I mean? But these folks were so hungry for what Jesus, and it was thousands of them. Just all day. If you went outside and saw 20,000 people walking down the street following one person, you know, I think about the movie Rocky, when Rocky was running down in Philadelphia and all the kids was running behind him, remember? And it was a big crowd and one Rocky, and he ran <laughs> up on the steps and was jumping up. And, and it was a lot of people, probably hundreds, but imagine thousands of people following one person just to want to hear what he has to say. Wow. Even to the point to where they were hungry. And he fed them as much as they would. Yes. Anyway, eat fresh. Don't let, it, don't let it be left over to the next day. Brand new word. So get into your devotional or whatever it is, even if it's a half a chapter, whatever it is, put some fresh wafer in your mouth and head out. And it'll benefit you. Everything is that you need is in the word of God yes. for that day. It doesn't sound like that, that little wafer may be enough, but it has all the nourishments and everything wrapped up all into it. All his grace, all his love is wrapped up in that one little wafer for you in his word. And Jesus said, I'm that wafer now. Give us this day our daily bread. That he, we even taught, they asked Jesus how to pray. And that was one of the main things in there. Give us this day our daily bread. What I need for today. And it's still a reference back to the manna. Give me today. Remember we've been talking about the word give, 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 give. And the Lord will. Exactly what you need daily. That's in the prayer that he was teaching us how to pray. Not please fix my situation for next week. You know this is going to be cut off on Friday. Please give me that job that I'm trying to look for. You know, and it's okay to pray once about what you believe the Lord, that you, the Lord wants you to have. But let it go and trust that your father, your heavenly great father, loves you enough to give you what you need for today. One thing about children, a little small like that, they ain't thinking about tomorrow. They just thinking about right now in the day because of that. They know that their daddy or their mommy or whatever got everything taken care of. That's the reason why the Bible said take to receive this thing as a little child. Just the freedom of knowing, you know, my little, my little one doesn't just come up and say, Daddy, you know, Friday is coming up and I'm really concerned about what we're going to eat on that day, you know. You know what I mean? He's just not, he's playing and enjoying himself in the time and in the now and the day. He hates to go to sleep for bed. <laughs> so don't look for the big revelation every day. Look for the small things that come that the Lord is reminding you. Like you may, you know what I mean? Like he, yesterday he just, when I was getting this revelation, he was doing all type of little small things to let me know that he was, like when we said talking about winking at me, that I'm with you. It may be a 
something you was looking for and you was in the store and you came in there and there it was, the sale was right on the thing that you wanted. I had to pick up my book check. I've been trying to get a hold of my um, publisher for a few days and he finally said, I'll leave your check in my shop. He has a gun store off of Davis Boulevard. And I was like, when am I going to be able to get around there? He left it in the mailbox. You know, so last night I had a run, a um, uh, 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 limousine run, and I dropped this couple off. They went and get, got engaged and they had their kids because they had separate kids from different marriages and they did it all as a big family thing. And they lived out in Capel someplace, um, somewhere, Collierville. And so on the way home, last night about 11, I was, I was taking them um, back to the house and uh, the father buzzes on, um, knocks on the, the window, and I wrote it down. He said, look, um, we want to stop by a uh, um, video store, family video store on Davis Street. <laughs> um, could you swing by there? I said, yeah. So I made the detour, and as I'm passing right by, and it's like the Lord was winking at me. I said, do you mind if I get something out of this mailbox? They said, sure. And so I got my check out. And went right to family video, and there it was closed. He said, "Oh, we had a feeling it would be closed. Just taking us on back to the house." Oh my God! <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and God is wrapping up the daily provision, but He does it when we trust and know that He does it, mm -hmm. instead of us trying to do it ourselves. Because He gets glory that way. Yes. Because yes, folks yes. will see, and if it's not pointing to Him and it's pointing to you, He's hands off telling you, but there's amazing wow. revelation, a miracle that comes in place when it points to him. It's like he rushes to fix it, or he rushes to do it, and then he does it in style. <laughs> oh my God, you know that style. Out of all the doggone streets in the area, and out of all the runs, he knew when I had to run that those people were, he knew that those people lived in Colleyville. He knew when they dispatched it to me two days earlier, he knew that that man was going to say, can we go by family video, just three, <laughs> three shopping centers up from Davis, on Davis Street, from where I needed to be. Man, he just saved time. May I ask, Pastor, in a limousine like that, they are the company, of course, paying for your gas. The guy probably tipped you more oh, yeah. because you drove out of the way for him. That probably tipped you your tip. He gave and plus, you're completely covered so with time. Time. And, and then he, the Lord didn't even want time. me to come back, swing back by to get on my way home. Because he knows that the 183 shuts down, that they delay stuff in the middle of the night. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's a big sign to say 15 minute delay up ahead. And, and you know, it's right there by 183. And he knew I would have had to. He just knew. So I went home another way that night without trying to get down to the, <laughs> And the awesome. Lord winks at us. Yes. All through, and so look yes. at the small things. Because yes. the thing is all built up around small things. You know, they're not bite side raindrops. Wow. bite side. you know what I mean? A lot of times we're so frustrated because we haven't got the big revelation of the big thing that we're concerned about or worried about. Don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough stuff in tomorrow for itself. Just coast out today. And the Lord has you covered. Hasn't he always have you had you covered? Yes. He had to have because you're here. Yes. Yes. It'd be yes. different yes. if you weren't here. <laughs> right. And you said he didn't have me covered, but then here you are. So he had to have had you covered. That's right. And here you are. So the only you, difference is, is that you didn't... Uh, did we enjoy the ride? We, 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 yes, yeah. we didn't enjoy the ride. <laughs> Was you complaining or worried or afraid or scared or upset yeah. and couldn't get no sleep? You know what I mean? <laughs> and oh, I'm getting Jesus. it. Amen. Jesus. It's Jesus. the small things that matter. That's right. Really. All those little small, round substance. Everything is in the small. And the one thing is manna is sweet. Yes. It was sweet. It wasn't just, you know, bland. It was sweet on the small round substance. So look at God, it just puts his little, he's so good. Look, in, the, in verse four of that same chapter, in the mixed multitude among them, the rabble who followed Israel out of Egypt began to lust greatly
for familiar and dainty foods. Oh boy. And the Israelites wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? Now you know who those were. A lot of people came out with Israel when they was released because they were scared of all those plagues and, and the night that Moses said that the, the firstborn was gonna die, a lot of Egyptians ran and stayed in the homes of the right. Israelites to make sure and a lot of them came out. So they weren't even covenant people. And here that God was feeding them too. <laughs> and but they began to get oh, we used to have and not, you gotta be careful about that. A lot of times you say, Oh, I remember when I had this job and I used to be able to do this. Oh, and I remember I used to go to this uh -huh. church and we used to praise and worship way more than like now, you know. <laughs> and things like that, then you start remembering <laughs> about how the good things were. You know what I mean? And then you start despising what's going on. Because, you know what I mean? Does it make sense? And look, it says, we remember the fish that we ate freely in Egypt. Now, you know they were slaves, but they somehow made this sound good that they ate fish freely, even though they were down there back breaking and building bricks and all that type of stuff. And you start thinking about the past, you'll start making it look real good. I just want to get back to something like that. When you was trying to get out. You know what I mean? And without cost, the fish. And then the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and onions and garlics. But now our soul, our strength is dried up. That's interesting that they say it was dried up. And is nothing at all in the way of food to be seen but this manna. That's a horrible thing to say. That is. To God and everything. And look, it says that their soul was dry. It's like a desert, empty place. And the Lord brought to my remembrance how when a, when a demon comes out of a man, he looks for dry places. Ooh. Someone who's dissatisfied, discomforted. You know what I mean? He searches for those to go into. Wow, that's good. But the, isn't there something how the Bible calls is another in the New Testament is another name for the word is the water of the word, and that it's wet and satisfying. And if you're wet and satisfying in the Lord, you're not going to have no dry places. Because the dry places showed up in their soul after they were saying, we got, we're bored of this, we're not, this is not the way it should be, it used to be better. Uh, that's what they were saying. Uh, that must sound dry. That's good. That's <laughs> a good one. And it says our strength. Is dried up, and there's nothing at all in the way of food to be seen mm -hmm. except this doggone manna. Mm -hmm. Now you got to be careful with that, because the Lord, every day when He provides you that manna, you have no idea what would have been going on if you hadn't been getting the manna. Wow! And we'll complain about the things we don't have or haven't seen, but you got to remember this is a loving Father who knows best. Like we were talking about earlier, He knows that His five-year-old can't get in the car and go down to the store. And we try to do it anyway. And there's a big accident on the corner of, of 5th and El Segundo. <laughs> I don't know why I said it. It just always seemed funny to me to say El Segundo. <laughs> just, that's strange. 5th and El Segundo. I think Fred Sanford used to say that a lot. <laughs> down, on, down on El Segundo. <laughs> anyway, that's numbers 11. Deuteronomy 8. This is really interesting. You're going to get a revelation out of this. Um, the Lord showed me this. But you shall earnestly remember the Lord your God. It's not a sidetrack. You shall earnestly remember the Lord your God, for it is he who what? Yes, yes, gives yes. you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers and this day. Now this is interesting. We heard this scripture a lot. That the Lord gives you power to get wealth. He gives you power to get wealth. But look at the scripture before it that we don't hardly ever see. In the context of what the Lord was saying. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know. And look, the, the, if he fed us in the wilderness with manna in verse 16 and verse 18, and it says, remember the Lord, because he's the one who gives you the power. So the power to get wealth is in the daily provision, is in the manna. Uh -huh. Wow, wow. Your manna wow. is the power to get wealth. 
The power to get wealth is you being satisfied in what the Lord has given you for that day. And there's something about being satisfied that releases the miracle working power from your father. He says that he gives you the power, he gives you manna, is the power to get wealth so that he may establish his covenant. The, it, the power to get wealth is the manna. Because the context says, he who fed you in the wilderness with manna. The scripture before it, then it says, you shall remember that the Lord did this because he's the one who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. And what is his covenant? I, don't, I didn't put it up there, but if you, whoever has your Bible, um, Romans 4, it kind of reminds us. If someone can get Romans 4 and read it, because I want us to get it, uh, for those who are listening, to get a good understanding about what the covenant is. If the Lord's going to establish his covenant with us, and it comes through the daily manna as power. Look at verse 13, I think. Can somebody read verse 13 of Romans 4? For the promise to Abraham or his posterity that he should inherit the world. Stop. I always wanted to do that. Because <laughs> you know, the churches and stuff, the preacher would say, read. And someone would read, and he said, stop. You know, I was to, but to read that again for me, please. For the promise to Abraham or his posterity, that he should inherit the world. That he should inherit the world. The covenant that the Lord had made with his fathers, the father Abraham, was that he should inherit the world. And our, our, our theme scripture is those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Inherit the world, reign in life. Finish reading for me, please did not come through observing the commands of the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Keep going. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, then faith is made futile and empty of all meaning, and the promise of God is made void as an old and has no power. For the law results in divine wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression of it either. Okay, we can stop right there. The, the power and the rest, something they just read out, it just clicked, but then I lost it. But, <laughs> but the, the, it comes through faith, and it comes through rest, and it comes through knowing that there's enough manna in the day that everything is in it, mm -hmm. and it's sweet. And the Bible says that's the power to get wealth. And the covenant, to establish his covenant with his father in this covenant is that Abraham, would, and it wasn't to his seed, that's the next scripture here, he didn't just give it to his seed, but to all those who are seeds of Abraham because he is our father. That's what it read on down that he didn't read yet. And I think it says that. What does the next verse say? Where you left off? 16. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor, to make it stable and valid and guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the devotees and adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, who was thus the father of us all. One more. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Mm -hmm. One more scripture. For Abraham, human reason for hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations, as he had been promised, so numberless shall your descendants be. Wonderful. Okay, look. This promise was given to Abraham that he would be heirs of the world. And we are his descendants. The next scripture he would have read, he would have said that we are the seed now. His descendants. It wasn't just to Jesus, now it's to us. It's all of us has the same promise of Abraham that we would be heirs of the world. And it's our mandate scripture. It's the same scripture. You heard him talk about grace. It's supposed to be given by grace, by faith. It's the same scripture. Those who receive the abundance of grace 
You might as well say those who receive the abundance of manna daily. And the gift of righteousness. And him being our father that he just gave everything you need. And they had to do no qualifications for it for that day. Shall reign in life. And right here it says he gives you power to get wealth. And it comes from the manna. And it says he gave it. Gives you power to get wealth. And he fed us in the wilderness with manna. With manna. Daily faith. And the manna gives you power to get wealth. And the manna is the word of God. It's just resting and relaxing. That's the reason why the Lord has started our ministry off with a series on rest. And I asked him why. And he said he'd tell me later. And I'm starting to see now that rest is the basic foundation of everything. The more you rest during the day, what we just talked about, the more you rest about how the Bible says that he created Adam and Eve and created everything first and then placed them into his rest on the seventh day. And when he talked about the manna, he said everything was gathered up on the sixth day and on the seventh day they weren't supposed to do nothing but rest. And there was enough provision for some reason that it did not stake for the seventh day when it was all done on the wow. sixth day. And the Lord wants us to. And Jesus said, be anxious for nothing. Don't be worried about anything. Your father knows how to feed the birds. He knows how to feed. He'll take care of you. And you, when you get this principle, you'll be dressed better than Solomon was. The more you rest. And now you think about Jesus' personality and how restful he was. He had everything. The Lord saw to it that... And he made it easy for him to do anything. I always say that but when he had to get across the lake, he just walked across. He had to feed himself he, and thousands of them, he just fed them. Any problem that he walked up against, he fixed it. And the same spirit that's in him is in us. How are we doing on time? 12.15. It's 12.15? Okay. Okay, we've got a couple more minutes. But look, Jesus, Matthew uh, 6, 33, I believe. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not your righteousness. Seek first his righteousness. Because Jesus is in right standing with God. Not you. That doesn't mean you seek to be as righteous as he was. It says seek his righteousness. Just look after, look into how perfect and right standing Jesus was. Look, seek first the kingdom of God and now Jesus was righteous and everything will be added. If you, you start looking at this, then you'll start seeing that you're not worthy enough. Yes. And then you'll start working hard to try to get your things to be done during the day. That's the reason why he said, look at Jesus' perfect righteousness. Because then you won't have to look at you no more. You won't be introspective. You'll be looking out towards Jesus. It'll be all about Jesus. It has nothing to do with us. And in his righteousness is the manna, is the daily provision in everything. And as long as you're not trying to qualify to earn whatever it is you think you're supposed to get during the day, God can show up on your behalf. And everything will be added. And then the take therefore, therefore means that that first scripture is the reason why that that's therefore. Therefore, take no thought for tomorrow. Or therefore, rest. Jesus' mouth. Therefore, rest, because it's my righteousness, not yours. Therefore, rest, for the morrow shall take care of the things of itself. Jesus said this. And anyone that's not preaching this is not preaching it right. I'm just going to say it right now. <laughs> They're not preaching it right, because right, right. all Jesus taught is that look at my righteousness and stop looking at yours and you'll rest and the moral will be taken care of for itself. Just get the manna and be joyful and happy today. Don't complain. It's enough for today. That little, Jesus, the Bible says that, that, that however much you needed was enough for everybody. But look at this again. But now our soul is dried up anyway. This is what they're talking about, they're complaining. And there's nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. And this is interesting. After they start complaining, look what happened to the manna. 
and the manner was as coriander seed and the color thereof of bedlam, which is like a pearl color, an off white. Once they start complaining, the daily provisions start changing. And it wasn't white, pure white no more. All of a sudden it became like a pearl color. And look what else happened. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in the mills, beat it in the mortar, baked it in pans, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was the taste of fresh oil. And if you taste oil, there was no taste. It became bland. And then look what they did. They gathered it, grounded it, work. beat it, and they worked. Work. And they worked during the day to try to make this grace into something that they could be tasteful. And it still came out tasting bland and nasty. Oh, my. And the color wasn't white no more. Mm. And it was bland and nasty. Mm. And that's what we do. We don't think that there's enough. We complain about the sweetness of it. Now the sweetness is gone. And we, don't think, and we start craving about things that we used to have and what things other people have and what we should have and all that. And then we say, all we have is this manna. And then we can't see the Lord's provision no more. And I'm telling you, his provision shows up big time when you rest in seeing his manna. And then now we're out running around trying to bake it, gather it, beat it, and mortar it, put it in pans, and make it a cake. <laughs> Anything we can do to try to make it take, and you're not going to get the color back. Wow. It's not pure white no more. But this is the interesting thing. Right after that, and when the dew fell upon the camp at the night, the manna fell, fell upon it. And the Lord still kept giving it. Even in the midst of all the junk and all the mess and doing all that, the faithfulness of the Lord's grace still kept coming. The color of it was different. We're still here. We're still around. And you notice that we still get by. <laughs> wow. Ain't as sweet as it was. But it wasn't sweet. It's not as sweet, but it's not as sweet as it could be. Yeah. And the power to get wealth is wrapped up in the daily manner. Wow. It's wrapped up daily. Yes. And it's daily. Yes. And Jesus said there was in his little bitty prayer, give us this day our daily bread. This is how you pray, y'all. That's what Jesus was saying. He was giving them the hints and the tidbits of it. This is how you do it. Just look, and, and Jesus was right there with them. And the same Jesus is right here with us. You know, and they can listen to him, be comforted. You know, that's the reason why they were so sad when he said, I got to go, because they were thinking, oh, what's going to happen to us now? But we have the same spirit inside of us, teaching us and showing us what to do. And every day that the, you open your eyes is a blessing. And the Lord will wink at you if you let him. It's hard to see his wink when you're going around trying to bake and cook pies and cakes and stir it up. And, you know, it's not going to taste as good. The revelation today is in your daily rest. The Lord has placed you in the seventh day. He just wants you to relax, rest. And when something pops up, I don't care what it is. Don't get all bent out of shape about it. Don't be bothered about it. Just say, Lord, I thank you that, I, that you're mine and I'm yours. And I'm in you, and you've already provided for me. I won't worry about tomorrow, or what the circumstances will be, or what the consequences will be, because there's enough stuff in just today. Don't, you got to eat fresh, and then when tomorrow comes, it'll be enough, man, it will be on the grass in the morning for you. All you got to do is gather it up. Just eat in the morning, and go about your day. Look to the Lord as your provider, and your father, and even back then, he wasn't even called Father, but now he's called Father. Mm -hmm. As your Father, that daily lays it out for you. And that's the power mm -hmm. to get wealth. Trust in his righteousness and not yours. Don't depend on, don't be upset about what you've done and what happened in the past and blaming yourself. Because all of a sudden, you're looking back and you're like those in Egypt, that looking back mm -hmm. to the leeks and the garb and the onions and all that it was, you know. Fresh, eat fresh, and eat sweet. Amen? Amen. You can never out -sin the grace of God. That's the reason why that stuff kept coming. Huh. And the Lord was still doing it for him, wow. even with that mess. His mercy was there the whole time. 
And we learned earlier that Moses could have came down in that camp with those Ten Commandments and everybody would have died. The Lord did not rebuke him for doing that. Right. He let him tear him up. He didn't tear him up because he was mad. He broke him because they couldn't stand him. And the Lord is still trying to say right now, I'm breaking the commandments because you can't stand. If I come into the camp <laughs> with my law, you cannot stand. So I'm going to give you this law that you're wanting it, but I'm going to place it under an area, under some blood, to where you guys can at least get by. And right now we have the blood that's everlasting, that can never be removed. That's the reason. Don't ever let nobody tell you that you got to keep repenting about your sins. Because all your sins were in the future when Jesus died. And while we were yet sinners, he died. And his blood is constantly covering. And every time the Lord is peeping down to you, robbing and stealing and slapping and all this stuff, if you belong to Jesus Christ and that blood covers you, all he sees is the perfect work of his son. And he stays pleased. We, lo we learned about our conscience. Our conscience will keep us from staying under the blood. But it ain't God. So you got to know who you are. You have to know who you are. All right. That's right. That's exactly right. That's it. Good stuff, Pastor. Praise God. Did y'all get something out of that? Oh, my right. gosh. Yes. Praise God. I did, too. Oh, did my too. gosh. You I'm know, like, when you were talking about children uh, not worrying about tomorrow and all that, they also it occurred to me they also always remember what mommy or daddy promised them. They do. They absolutely they never forget a promise. They do. <laughs> Ever. Because I told like, my son I'd take him to the go get ice cream. Oh, yeah. And, and he, every time I pick up my son That's now, true. did you get the fishing pole yet? I'm supposed to go fish. Because you promised it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And they depend on that promise. Oh, and they look gosh. for it as law as absolute. Gold. It's an absolute. This is what's going to be there when I come. Oh, yeah. my goodness. This. And the Bible says the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. All of them. You know what else came to me? It was that uh, with the manna and the, the baking and cooking and grinding it and all that, that we, uh, it's so a picture of us because we take, uh, say, church or the word or whatever uh, program and we can make it better, we can make it bigger, we can do this and this and this and we, 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 and it'll have our name on it and oh, yeah. it'll be, you know, our church that does this or our whatever you know that does this and we have taken god's word and done this with it won't he be so excited because after all you know they use scriptures to say you know that uh, well what did you do with that uh, gift that i gave you well, yeah, yeah, they you that, and yeah. they use that for, for that and then they take this and it comes out with worms and, and not and speaking and not doing what oh my gosh but if you leave it just the, the pure manna yeah. <laughs> the Lord is it's kind almost of a, laughable. It's like, oh my God. Isn't that great? Oh my God, it's so good. And I was getting them getting all this at the same time you're getting it. Hmm. And really, and the more you hear it, so never despise if you hear me say something again twice. Because I'm telling you, it's, it, it takes root. Anchor is on. And you may say, oh, you said that two, three times already. But faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. That's right. Over and over, you keep hearing it and hearing it, and next thing you know, you're looking like Christ. Mm -hmm. And that power, when you know something, when you intimate with something, and you step out on that boldness, and stuff happens immediately. Instead of you just being a little weary, weary, you know, I'll try. Wow. Wow. But you know it. You know it just like you know that once you take your next step, you're not going to fall. You know what I mean? Compared to back when you first start walking, I know you can't remember that. But you know, when a little kid starts walking, they put a little wobbly foot out, and they're concerned, and another little wobbly foot out. Oh, it's working, you know, but then they may fall. Oh. But we walk like it's nothing because it's all we know. Yeah. We've been doing it for so long, and it's the same way with the Word of Christ. You eat on this thing, it'd be like, <laughs> and people will ask, why do you walk so well? <laughs> How do I, can I walk like that? That's some good walking. It just comes natural now. And the Bible said we're changed into the Lord's image by looking at Him, just beholding Him. So that's what we do here on Saturdays. We look at the Lord and behold on Him, and we get our equilibrium together, 
and we don't wobble. And I'm telling you, everything that you need, every pain, every sickness, every whatever, as you're hearing this, you'll be surprised what starts happening. You'll be surprised. You'll be able to say stuff and pray for people and do you know what I mean? The headache will go away immediately and all that. Because we're growing up into the Lord Jesus Christ in all things, the Bible said. In all things. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word today. Thank you for your precious people that heard it. And those who are listening, we know this word is powerful and it's going to spread. We know that you are the pure word of God. White, pure white and sweet. And that pure white speaks of your righteousness. Lord, it's your righteousness, not ours. So we won't try to measure up. And when we fall, we'll just look straight to the cross and say, thank you, there's my punishment. Even if we fall seven times during the day, we'll just keep looking up to you and say, thank you, you've paid. And we'll stroll on out, knowing that there is no condemnation. And knowing that, Lord, we'll have the power to not repeat that same thing again. And Lord, we, we appreciate you. We appreciate this loving word that you've given us. Yes. Because you love us. And it comes straight from you. And let, us, let it be an example in our lives this week as we go about what we're doing. Help us to recall on it and to grow from it and be that light that we're supposed to be in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, Pastor, would you pray over our giving? Sure. Here, the blessing over us? Yes. Father, we thank you for the seed that's being sown today. Those who have gladly and cheerfully sown whatever it is that you've given them to place into this word and this ministry. It is a blessing. And Lord, we know that wherever we place our seed, especially in this type of good ground, the multiplication is ridiculous. It's not going to make any sense. And Lord, people will see us and know that our gift, uh, that the gift into your will has multiplied back to us a hundred thousand fold. We pray over this offering and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Got a nice